So right before COVID, my game group has started playing Gaslands. Now, if you're not familiar with Gaslands, this is like a 164-ish scale miniature game that basically gives you the excuse to steal some kids' matchbox cars and turn them into a, like a Mad Max or Death Race inspired machines of mayhem. And to be frank, I've decided that my game group needs some train for this new game. So I dug these plastic cars out of a Toys for Tots donation bin and decided to turn them into some rusted old wrecks. But rather than painting them to look rusty, what if I could just, you know, make them actually rust? <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Table Ready Gaming. I'm Dave, and we've reached that part of the video where I have to beg for your validation by asking you to like my video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment below. I know this seems silly, but these little things do help this channel grow and helps me get seen on YouTube and make more content for you. So basically, in short, could you just... Well, now that that's all out of the way, let's head on down to the hobby bench and I'll get this project started. So I first got this idea from watching The Craft Man. He did a video where he rusted up an old UFO toy, and I thought we could use some similar techniques and get some pretty cool effects for the tabletop. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is make our rust accelerator, and this is made from vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, and a pinch of salt. Now I never really could find a recipe for this, and every guide I found basically just said more hydrogen peroxide than vinegar. So I did about two thirds hydrogen peroxide to one third vinegar and a little bit of salt. And it seems to have worked out all right. Oh, and before you do mix this up, make sure you're wearing a respirator because there's definitely some smells coming off this concoction. It's ready. It's time to start giving these cars a bit of a makeover. First thing I needed to do was disassemble these cars. And that was done by removing two small screws at the bottom. But thankfully, to the wonders of editing, we could just make this look like magic. Once the cars are taken apart, it's time to sculpt some battle damage. And by sculpting battle damage, I really mean just go to town like your Taylor Swift, and you need to work out some of your emotional issues by, you know, filling that blank space. After these cars were officially smashed, it was time to take them outside and give them a prime. I decided to do like kind of a silver spray paint as I think this raw metal look will contrast well with the rust. Then I just splotched some random paint colors to try to hint at the original paint of the car and just to add some visual contrast to the model. So, you know, not every train piece looks exactly the same. The next step is where the real fun began on these models. I started by using some white glue and stippling it all over the cars focusing on areas where I felt like rust would really start to form. I then just sprinkled each car with some iron filing. For this project, I only used the finest grain of iron filing. The others just looked simply too large for the scale. Also, these shavings don't make half bad maracas in a pinch. So for the basis of this project, I just decided to keep it easy and use these wooden litco bases I've had lying around since like forever. I decided to merge them into the game table a little more by sanding down the edges. Now, I don't know if I really recommend that you do this, as because really all I did was make a big mess on my hobby bench. But I did learn how to use my Dremel tool a little better. <sighs> right, so. We got the bases done. Um, everything is covered in sawdust. Here's your reminder. Take Amanda's plant out of the water. <laughs> right. So anyhow, got the bases done. Um, just some little tips on uh, using a Dremel tool that I just discovered. Uh, first off, if you're using these little sanding bits, there's a neat little like screw thing here that can uh, tighten and loosen that so that doesn't go flying off. And also, when I started this off, I was uh, had this on max settings, because you know, obviously more power is better. And I was just chewing through all my little drill bits right there. Um, setting this at like half power was fine. 
and I actually got to keep these little sanding papers around. So, you know, that's why this is more of like a tutorial, um, not really a tutorial channel, but more like a how I did a channel. So anyhow, lessons learned. Hopefully you find it helpful and this isn't too rambly. Anyhow, let's get back to it. After the bases were ready, I made some simple aluminum foil balls and just smash these to the bases and use them as rocks. After I got the acrylic down, I thought these looked too much like lemon bars. So, you know, I decided to paint them up to look like biscuits instead. So then, frustrated with how all this was looking, I decided to cover the entire base with sand and PVA glue and let it dry. And now I have to say this base looks... Mediocre. Now, while I've yet to land on a base design that I really like, by this point I have wasted enough time to show off the real star of this video. And that's the rusting medium, and what it does when it's applied to the iron filing we glued down to the cards. This worked like a charm. Seriously, this was just too much fun. And I got so excited by the look of these models. Now, it does take a bit of time for this whole thing to work out, but it's not like you're doing anything at this time. Shoot, while these cards rusted, I worked on organizing my train bits and just kind of let them sit. Overall, this project has been filled with some real ups and downs. I find in my hobby that sometimes when I'm at bat at a new project, I only hit that ground at a first and not the home run I was hoping for. But if you want to win a game of baseball, the most reliable thing you can do is get on base. So don't forget to celebrate life's small victories along with the big ones, even if the results of the pitch aren't exactly what you wanted. So these bases will need a little work. But as for the iron filings and the rust accelerator, this is a technique I will certainly be using again. I think this is going to look especially good on Warhammer, 40k models, Necromunda, Terrain, and you know, any Skaven or Orc with a K build I do in the future. So anyhow, here's the final shots of the Terrain. Now, they're not 100% done because I still need to figure out what's going on with that base. But I feel like I'm well on my way. Until next time, I'm Dave, this is Table Ready Gaming, and I hope you have fun storming the castle. Hey, one more tip before you go. If you do try to paint over this effect, I tried some non-oil. Be careful. This effect does not take paint well. That's all I got for now. Go check out Ninetale Hobbies. He's got some great tips for getting your cars ready for Gaslands. Also, Miniacalypse, pretty great streamer. If you ever got some free time, check out his streams. He's a pretty cool guy to hang out with. And if you don't want to sleep well tonight, head over to Big Adventures Miniature Worlds. He made some real nightmare fuel out of a Thomas the Tank Engine.